So in this video I'm going to show you how to prove Pythagoras' theorem. Now um, there are many ways of proving Pythagoras' theorem, some more difficult than others. This method here is probably the easiest method of all and um, I'm going to show you now that how to do this in, in a step-by-step -step manner. So we start off here with what Pythagoras' theorem states. It states that in a right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. In other words, it has to be a right angle triangle we're talking about, and the length of the hypotenuse squared is going to equal the sum of these two guys squared. So in other words, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And if you were to be asked that in the exam, it would, it, the question would sound something like this. Uh, prove that in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So this theorem is one of the five theorems that we have to give a formal proof of uh, in the exam. So if we're asked this question, we have to give our answer in a certain manner, a certain set manner. And, and we also have to make sure that we go through the proof of it in a fairly detailed way, not leaving out any essential details, so that we follow through to the actual proof in a logical and clear step-by-step -step manner. So after you write the statement, uh, we always start with a diagram of what's given. Now what's given really comes from the statement itself. It says, in a right angle triangle, so clearly we need an, a right angle triangle. So a right angle triangle is given. And also we need, we're talking about the sum of the squares of all the sides and the lengths of all the sides. So we need something to describe the length of all the sides. So that's why we label each side uh, a, B, and C. So the next thing we do is we write in what's given. We write in in English what's given. So we're really just describing what we've just drawn here. So I've literally written that in. A right angle triangle with sides of length A, B, and C. So that's what we're describing here. Next we write in what we have to prove. Well, that's simply the mathematical version of this sentence. So this t tells us that the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So how would we write that in maths? We'd say c squared, the hypotenuse squared, is equal to a squared plus b squared. So the next thing we have to do in this uh, proof is to write out the construction. Now the construction is, the way I like to think of it is it's like the extra bits you have to draw in order to actually prove this theorem. So in this particular theorem we have to draw a lot of extra bits. So I'm going to do that in the next page. But everything that we draw in addition to this diagram here is what we're going to need to be able to prove the theorem. And you see what I mean as the proof goes along. So if you remember when we were writing down what was given we first of all drew a diagram of what's given and then afterwards we explained it in English. We're going to do the same thing here with the construction. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw it. And to draw it, what we need is a square within a square. So I'll show you how you achieve that. Um, usually what I do to, to work this out is I, I mark here. So I'll mark this point here roughly about a centimeter up here. And I'm going to go a centimeter from the edge here as well and a centimeter from the edge here and a centimeter from the edge here and then I try and draw straight lines between them now bear with me here I might not be so straight because of this tool that I'm using right, so here to here we connect here to here and then here to here okay that doesn't look great but anyway I think you know what I mean now obviously if you're going to use a ruler in the exam you're going to get much better results than this Okay, so um, so that's the first thing that we do. So the next thing that we do is we mark in the lengths of the sides. If you remember in the first, in the given triangle, we had the length A here and the length B here. So we're going to make this the length B, then the length A, then the length B, then the length A, then the length B, then the length A. So they're all going to be equal to each other. Obviously, A's are going to be equal and the B's are going to be equal. Now, the outer tr 
uh, the outer square, the outer shape here is meant to be a square. So we've got to show that it's square by putting in right angles on in each at each corner. And also we're going to have to de describe this square at the end. So we're going to have to label the vertices of the square. So I've labeled the vertices in capital letters to distinguish them from the lengths of the sides, which are in small letters. And one thing I forgot was to, to put in the lengths of the hypotenuse of all of the triangles. So we call the, those uh, lengths C. So they're all C here. Now at one stage in the proof we're going to have to use certain angles. Uh, for example this angle, this angle, this angle and this angle will all be used in the proof. So for that reason, we need to label all those angles. So I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3, and 4. And one final thing we're going to have to do is label the vertices of the inner square um, because we're going to have to refer to that uh, later in the proof as well. So we label them E, F, G, and H. So now that we've drawn the construction, we can go ahead, go ahead and describe the construction. So the first thing that we did was we drew, drew a square, uh, PQRS, with lengths of A plus B. So draw a square, PQRS, where length of each side is A plus B. So the next thing we have to do is create the inner quadrilateral. And we start that by making a point here, a point H, that's on the line segment PS. So we construct point H on the line segment PS such that s to h, the distance of s to h is equal to a, and hence the distance between h and p is equal to b. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but luckily we don't have to repeat that for the point g, f, and e. We can just say simply say similarly construct point g on the line segment pq, point f on the line segment qr, and point E on the line segment SR. So now we can join up those four points so that we can make a square with four triangles and a quadrilateral. So we write join EFGH to divide the square PQRS into a quadrilateral and four triangles. And finally we have to mention the four angles that we set up here. So we simply say, label the angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I know this is very detailed and finicky, uh, but this is actually the suggested solution from the State Examination Board. So this is roughly speaking what you, what you want to remember for, the, for this theorem. It's probably the hardest part of proving this theorem, is rem remembering the details of the construction. So now that we've completed the given to prove and construction sections of the proof. We need to start next with the pr actual proof itself. But before we jump into the proof, I just want to mention one thing about congruent triangles, because we're going to be talking about that in the proof, and you need to understand what congruent triangles means. So here are two examples of congruent triangles. And what, what that means is that all the corresponding sides and angles are equal. So, for example, the side B is equal to the length of the side B here, the length of the side A is equal to A, and C is equal to C. But also the corresponding angle. So this angle is equal to this one, this one is equal to this one, and this one is equal to this one. So you need to be aware of that fact uh, when I'm talking about the proof uh, in the next page. So bear in mind that this is not part of the proof. I'm just showing you this so that you can understand the next step of the proof. Okay, so to start off the proof, we have to prove that the four triangles are congruent. So these four triangles here, we have to prove that they're congruent. And we can do that because we know that the length of the side A and the length of side B are equal in all of the triangles. And we also know the angle between those two sides is a 90 degree angle. So those two facts allow us to say that these four triangles are congruent using the method side angle side. So remember, to prove that things are congruent, you need on to, 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 to prove that only three things are equal. It could be side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, or right angle, hypotenuse, side. We use, in this case, side, angle, side. 
Now once we know that all the triangles are congruent, we can say then that all the corresponding sides are equal. So this side C here has to be equal to the length of this side C here. So that gives us a quadrilateral with four sides of length C. So we can say therefore length of each side of inner quadrilateral equals C. Now you might be thinking now, oh, okay, isn't that a square? Kind of looks like a square and it has four equal sides. But it's not necessarily a square. We, we can't really go by the fact that it looks like it's a square. We need to prove that it's a square. And, you know, you could have a, say, a parallelogram that has four equal sides as well. So the way we prove that it's a square is by proving that each corner of the square is a right angle. This is the reason that we use these angles here in the construction. So the first thing we're going to say is that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees because this here is 90, so the, all of these add up to 180, so the remainder must be 90. So 1 and 2 is equal to 90, but we're also going to say that angle 1 is equal to angle 3 because they're corresponding angles, right? This angle from this triangle, 3, corresponds to this angle from this triangle. So let's just write that out now and you see where I'm going with this. Okay, so first we write that angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. As we said, the reason is because remaining angles in a triangle. Remember we said that these two angles are the remaining angles and they have to equal to 90 degrees because this angle here is 90 degrees. So note the way I've written this. First of all, I write this statement followed by what's called an ellipsis, the three dots here. And then here I put in the my reasoning. So you have to give a reason. This is important. You can't just write this and leave this empty. You've got to give a reason for each statement that you make. So the next thing that we say is that the angle 1 is equal to the angle 3. Uh, the reason for that is because they are congruent angles, corresponding angles, in congruent triangles. So I simply write the reason corresponding angles. That should be sufficient. Uh, and again, don't forget the ellipsis. Now, because of these two statements, we can say that therefore angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 90 degrees. Why can we say that? Because we know angle 1 is equal to angle 3, so we just replace the 1 here with the angle 3 to get angle 3 plus angle 2 equals 90. So whenever you want to say a therefore, just use these triangular dots. And you usually use this when you're following on from a series of statements. So these two statements implies that this is true. This in turn allows us to say that angle 4 is equal to 90 degrees. Why is that? Because if these two add up to 90 and this is a straight line, the whole thing is 180, so this must be 90 degrees. Angle 4 must be 90 degrees. So the reason for this, we're going to have to put in a dot, 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 straight angle. So now that we've proven that this angle here is a right angle, that would mean that all of the angles are right angles. So that in turn means that this inscribed quadrilateral is in fact a square because all the sides are equal and all the angles are 90 degrees. So once those two facts are true, we know that it's square, so we can say therefore inscribed quadrilateral is a square. So now that we know that the inner shape here is a square and the outer shape is a square, we can go on to finish off this proof by saying that the area of the whole square is equal to the sum of the areas of the shapes inside the square. So what shapes have you got inside the square? You've got a square here and then you've got four of these triangles, one, two, three, four. So the area of the total square would be equal to the sum of the areas of the, the shapes inside. So this plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this. So how are we going to work that out? So we start off by making an equation, and it's often helpful just to make an equation in English like I've done here. So we're, we literally say that the area of the PQRS, which is the bigger square, is equal to four times the area of the tri each triangle plus the area of the inscribed square. Now we're going to try and figure out, well, how would we work this out? Well, it would be A plus B would be the length of the side, and they're all the same, so it's going to be a plus b times a plus b. Remember, the length, uh, the, the area of a square is the length by the width, so both are the same in a square's case, so it would be a plus b times a plus b. 
So now let's focus on the right hand side of the equation. Let's start off with this part which corresponds to the area of the inscribed square. Well that's just going to be c times c or c squared in other words. And then for the triangle, how do you work out the area of a triangle? Let's take this as the base and this is the perpendicular height. We know the formula for the area of a triangle is half the base by the perpendicular height. So in this case, it will be half AB. So it's going to be 4 times a half AB plus C squared. Now 4 halves gives you 2, so that ends up being 2AB plus C squared. Okay, so this part I'm going to work out in my work work. Now if you're multiplying two expressions... The way I prefer to do this is use the split and repeat method. So what that means is you split the, the first expression here into two parts and multiply each part by the second expression. So a times a plus b plus b times a plus b. And then you multiply out the brackets, you get a squared plus ab plus ab plus b squared. And that simplifies down to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So I'm now going to put that in instead of this. So we end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals 2ab plus c squared. Now if you notice, there's a 2ab here and there's a 2ab here, so we can just cross them out, they cancel each other. Which leaves us with a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is what we had to prove, remember, that's the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So we've now proven Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so this is the actual solution recommended by the State Examination Board. And you can see on the right here, their marking scheme. Now, this is from a few years ago, so the scheme might not be the same now, but it gives you a rough idea of how it's marked. So it divides it into several steps, and you lose three marks if you get any of the steps wrong. So I, I included this just, just to convince you that this is the level of detail that you're expected to know uh, in this particular theorem. Y you will see videos on YouTube where they give a more simple explanation of this theorem, but those videos would not be sufficient to get the full marks in this question. To get the full marks, you need to be as detailed as this example here.